Right, so this is the first tutorial, and this is all about just getting comfortable with the different uh, tools within Galaxy and how to navigate Galaxy. So, uh, what does Galaxy look like? The first thing you're supposed to do is open up Galaxy. You'll need to log in or register. I'm obviously already registered, otherwise I would not be running this course. Key actions. Name a current history. Well, I'm going to create a new history so it's nice and clean, and I'll call this demonstration of tutorial one. We're now going to upload a file, so I'm going to copy the URL, let's see, upload file from disk, paste fetch data, very easy to accidentally do this in the wrong section, uh, paste it there, and then I'll call it um, adding to history, 100%, close, and then I'll wait for that file to upload. All right, so it's finally uploaded. So now I want to look at the file. So I'm gonna hit the view data button. I can see all sorts of interesting things there. User tool. So I'd like to look at the quality of the data. So I'm gonna look for fast QC. Little tip pro tip here. Different instances will have different lists here. It's quite important you pick the right thing. <laughs> so in this case, it's fast QC. The search tool isn't at all that brilliant in Galaxy, but it will eventually get you what you need. All right. So I have my uploaded file. No change in anything else. Execute. Now I can wait for that to happen. I'll fast forward a bit. All right, it's done. We can then look at all this interesting stuff by scrolling through. Pretty good. We're now going to filter by quality. So if you're not finding a filter by quality tool, you might be on the wrong Galaxy instance. As I said, you kind of have to look for it. There we go, it's under fast fast Q. Filter by quality. Quality cutoff, 35%, 80, execute. One thing I really love about Galaxy is that if anything goes wrong, it's quite easy to rerun a tool, which is what they're going to show you in a second. So we can now click on the eye there, learn a bit more. We can click on here, which tells you your parameters as well as your input and output reads. Uh, so it, it's always quite good to both be able to view data as well as click on here to get some more information. So now let's rerun it again, but let's choose a different setting and see what happens. So if I click here and I click rerun this job again, all right, I'm now going to click 36 or 35. Right, and so now we can again look at these parameters. We can see the number of sequences that were kept and thus deduce the number of reads that were discarded. Right, so now we're gonna create a new history. I'm gonna come up here to create a new history. All right, next analysis. So note this is not is an answer key because it is just renaming history, okay? And then now we're gonna go view all histories. This is awesome because, well one, you can see loads and loads of histories from me, right? So you can click and drag a file over and then you don't have to re-upload it, which is lovely. Uh, pro tip is that if you just go here, oftentimes it won't work. You actually do need to drag it all the way to the top and into the box. And then to go back, you hit analyze data. I'd also like to give you guys a pro tip about histories in general. And that is, if you're trying to troubleshoot, for instance, you can go to History Options, Share or Publish, and you can make the history accessible via a link. This is lovely for multiple reasons. One, if you're troubleshooting, you can copy this link, hand it to someone, and they can import your history. Uh, and the other thing that's nice is if you're working together to analyze something or you want to show someone your data, uh, that you can do the same thing and share it, share it via a link. So that's very helpful. Right, and so that was how you got through this tutorial.